101.5 Merry Meadow for Hello Kitty Island Adventure brought with it flowers and flower breeding. Other video guides on the channel cover how flowers work and a full intro to flowers, how to get seeds, fertilizer, and the trowel, and we'll recap a few of those things, but in this video we're going to focus on breeding flowers, getting those new colors and patterns. So here's a really quick recap in general. When you plant seeds that you find, you get your native flower type in its default colors. When you plant seeds from packets, you get that kind and color of flower. If you water your flowers, they grow faster and take fewer days to bloom. Flowers will regrow after you pick them, so once they're fully grown, you could water, pick, water, and then the next day repeat it, so each day you're getting a new flower. And solid colored flowers can be put in the seed dispenser to make new solid colored seeds. You have a new tool with flower breeding, this is the trowel, you can find it on your tool ring, just like you could your net or your camera. You can use it to dig up and move flowers. This is also really helpful to check the type and color of new seeds that spawn. When you dig up a flower, it'll show up on your screen either as a seed or a sprout and show you what kind of flower it is, but currently it won't show you the color. In order to find the color, what I tend to do is to go to an empty plot, pretend like I'm going to plant a seed in it, and then I scroll all the way to the bottom of whatever type of flower that was. So if it was a seed packet and it was a tulia all the way down to the end of the tulia, and the very last one I see is the one that I dug up last. But I do need to know whether it was a seed or a sprout and which flower type it was. This will probably change in 1.6 once we have labels and stacking. For now, this seems to be the most reliable way to see what the colors are. Currently, when you dig up a flower, it's either going to give you that larger sprout or a seed packet, depending on how far along it is. But this also means if you dig up a sprout, a bud, or a bloom, it's gonna go back to that larger sprout stage. Officially, this is called grown, but I kept getting confused, so I'm saying larger sprout or sprout. And as of update 1.5.1, you can no longer water or fertilize those larger sprouts after transplanting them. And because of that, that means you can actually lose progress if you transplant a bloom or a bud, because you won't be able to water it to get it back to that stage, but they will catch up eventually. If you don't want to breed a color and somebody you know has the color you really want, you can ask them to trade flowers with you. If you want to plant it as a flower, you can take that flower to the seed dispenser and turn it into seeds that you can plant yourself, as long as it's a solid color and not a pattern. As of 1.5.5, you will not be able to trade sprouts or seed packets. So if you're planning on trading, make sure that you're keeping your flowers as flowers. Let's talk about fertilizer. Fertilizing is the only way we know of right now to get a pattern flower like a gradient or an ombre. And that's the only pattern we have in the game right now. Pattern flowers cannot go in the seed dispenser to make more seeds, so they're considered rare. You can fertilize at any stage of the flower, and each time you fertilize, you have a chance of it turning into one of those patterns, those rare flowers. If you end up with a rare color, you might want to wait to fertilize it until you have at least one bloom, so that way you can still make seeds from it. Once you get a pattern, it stays a pattern, and you cannot fertilize it anymore. You can pluck the blossom, it'll regrow the next day, and it'll still be that pattern. All flowers are actually supposed to freeze once they bloom, but right now you can keep fertilizing a fully bloomed flower and you still have a chance at each fertilization that it may turn into a pattern. But keep in mind this might change in the future. Fertilizer is not a guarantee. The game even tells us it increases our chance of getting a rare flower. So really it's random chance each time you use it. Fertilizing does make it more likely that flowers will propagate and give us those new seeds or spawns and it increases your chance chance at new colors. New seeds can happen without fertilizer, but it's less common. And hybrid colors can happen without fertilizer, but it's much, much less common. I'm not even sure we've seen this happen yet. But let's look more in detail about those new seed spawns and breeding flowers. Now, if you're like me and a lot of other players, you may have played another game with flowers such as Animal Crossing. And in those games, we're looking at genetics, we're worried about the parent flowers needing to touch in adjacent squares, and then a new flower could spawn in any of these squares touching either of those parents. However, that is not the way it works in Hello Kitty Island Adventure. Instead of thinking about the parents at first to understand this, we have to think like that new seed. Because the way it works in this game, 
a new seed spawns, and that seed looks around to its adjacent squares, any of the ones that it's touching, and it can choose any two squares there to be the parent flowers. And the parent flowers don't need to be touching one another. So if we have a new seed spawn in the middle, and it has flowers all the way around it, so that new seed reaches out to those squares around it, and it randomly chooses two flowers to be its parents. Now I feel like there's probably other factors affecting that randomization, and not all of those flowers are going to be able to breed with one another, so sometimes it looks like we simply get clones. But the key thing to keep in mind is that both parents need to touch that new seed, but the parent flowers don't need to be in plots that touch one another. So a new seed could reach out diagonally in opposite directions, up and down, or across in opposite directions, or any other combination. But let's look at this in terms of the parent flowers, because those are going to be the ones that we plant in hopes of getting that new seed. So let's pretend we have flower A, it's going to be a red tulia, flower B, a yellow tulia. They have a chance to make a new seed AB. Let's pretend it's an orange tulia. Again, it's a chance, it's not guaranteed. But if I place them diagonally from one another, there's one square that they're touching. If I place them across from one another, or up and down from one another with a space in between, there are three three places that they both touch and could spawn that new seed. If I put them right next to each other, I actually have four spaces that touch both the yellow and the red. It's the same thing if I put them up and down from one another and touching. But if I put them touching diagonally, there's only two squares that touch both the red and the yellow. If you know you really want these two flowers to breed, you're much better off putting them next to each other or up and down from each other rather than diagonally because you're going to get more opportunities for that new seed to spawn. And if you have two pairs or more, doing spaced pairs is going to give you even more chances for that new hybrid seed. Keep in mind that if you want to make sure that any seeds that spawn in your area are definitely from these flowers, you're going to need to leave a two row buffer to make sure that no other flowers can spawn seeds into this area. Keep in mind this is only a chance for that new color, so in our case orange, but we can also see seeds that look just like the parent flowers so we could end up with a red or yellow, and fertilizing these flowers is going to increase our chance for it to be that orange because that fertilizer makes it more likely for us to see that new color and although there is a chance for it to happen without fertilizer i have yet to see a non-fertilized flower produce a new color so it must be pretty rare so let's talk about those colors so if you've been planting flowers you're probably thinking of the colors in terms of those base colors you have for each of the four main flower types so for bell buttons you have yellow blue and white tulia red yellow and violet dandelily red yellow and white and Penstemum comes in green, sky, and white. And if you're like me and you're trying to apply your knowledge from other games like Animal Crossing, you may be trying to figure out the genetics, you might be trying to breed a bunch of red tulia with red tulia in hopes that it turns into something else, and that's just not gonna happen because flowers in this game work differently. So let's change perspectives and look at the flower color palette. We have 29 colors here. We have that black, gray, and white. I don't know yet how to make black and gray flowers or even if they're actually possibilities in the game. We we have the main row of colors and then we have all the tints of color. Now I have a hard time identifying all of these in game, especially all of the bluey green ones and all of the different colors of pink. So I made this overlay that you can put on your screenshots or over your game screen. And each color has a little transparent place in the middle. So you can line it up and get a better idea of what color your flower probably is. I'll put a link to it in the description and in the discord. Based on what we know so far about flower breeding in Hello Kitty Island Adventure, I think the most helpful thing when thinking about the colors is not not to think of them as genetics, but to think of them more like paint. Let's start by looking at those main colors. So here's an example where they work just like paint. We have those main colors, and then we have tints of those colors. So if this was paint, I would simply add white to the top color to get the bottom color, and that is the way it works with the flowers. So the only way to get all those tints on that bottom row is to mix the color on top with white. So if I want to get warm pink, I need to breed red and white flowers together. The tints cannot breed with one another, so if I have a warm pink and a cream, I cannot mix them together to get peach. The only way to get peach is with orange and white. So there you go, now you know how to make 13 new colors of flower. And the good thing is, these color combinations work across all of the flowers. So you don't have to learn color breeding for dandelilies and then learn color breeding for bell buttons. It's all gonna be the same. To make cream, you're gonna use a yellow 
yellow dandelily with a white dandelily. To make a cream bell button, I'm going to use a yellow bell button with a white bell button. So you only have to learn the color combinations one time. So now that we've made all the tints, let's look at all the other colors. So some of our flowers come in these colors by default. So in red, we already have Tulia and Dandelily. In yellow, we have Bell Button, Tulia and Dandelily. In green and sky, we have Penstemum. In blue, we have Bell Button. For violet, we have Tulia. For white, we have Dandelily, Penstemum, and Bell Button. And then in hot pink, we have hibiscus. So that covers more than half of our colors already. Well, let's look at how you can make the rest. So in order to make coral, we can combine an orange and a red. In order to make that orange, we can combine yellow and red. We can make lime by combining yellow and green. Even though we have a base already in green, we can also make green by combining blue and yellow. For teal, we combine sky and green. Indigo is going to be violet and blue. Violet is going to be red and blue. And magenta is going to be violet and hot pink. So based on the bases that you already have with each flower, here are the colors you can make just with those bases. So for Penstemum, we can combine our sky and green and get teal, and that's going to give us green, teal, sky, and white. And then if we combine our green with white, our teal with white, and our sky with white, we'll get mint, seafoam, and cloud, which are tints of those three colors. For our bell buttons, we can combine yellow and blue to get green, and then yellow and green to get lime. And then we have white bell buttons, so we can combine the white with each of those colors. So white and yellow will get cream white and lime pistachio, white and green mint, and white and blue ice. For dandelily, we can combine our yellow and red to make orange, and then our orange and red to make coral. Dandelily has white as one of its defaults, so we can use white and red to make warm pink, white and coral to make blush, white and orange to make peach, and white and yellow to make cream. Now in my color charts, you'll notice that the warm pink and the blush have kind of a two-tone in their circle. The color on the left is the first official color palette, and the color on the right is what I pulled from the in-game display to make it a little bit easier to identify these. For Tulia, we can combine that red and yellow to make orange, and then orange and red to make coral. Now instead of white, Tulia has violet, and right now we haven't been able to combine violet with any of these colors to make new colors. So for Tulia, we only only have red, coral, orange, and yellow. But what if I want other colors of Tulia? What if I want a hot pink Tulia? Flowers can breed across types. What we have seen consistently happen in game is a gradient or a pattern of one type giving its color to another. So for instance, I have a gradient hot pink hibiscus next to a yellow Tulia and that spawns a hot pink Tulia. So right now we only have one pattern in game and that's this gradient or that ombre and it has the flower color in the middle and then on the edges it has white unless it's white and then it's white in the middle and kind of pinkish on the edges. But because it has that white on the outside going back to thinking of these as paint I like to think of it as that gradient flower is having poured out some of its color that it could then hand off to another flower type. So we have seen yellow Tulia and white gradient bell button turn into a white Tulia. Gradient hibiscus with a penstem turn into a hot pink penstemum. Violet gradient tulia and hibiscus turn into a violet hibiscus. Violet gradient tulia and a penstemum giving a violet penstemum. Gradient hibiscus and a yellow bell button giving a hot pink bell button. Yellow gradient bell button and a penstemum giving a yellow penstemum. And red gradient dandelily mixing with a white bell button to make a red bell button. So those are just some examples. But you can see why those rare pattern flowers can be so useful. So just like breeding those hybrid colors you're gonna need that gradient color in one flower type and the flower type you want to pass that gradients color onto to both be touching the same empty square then a seed may spawn again it's only a really small chance a higher chance with fertilizer so definitely continue fertilizing and then a seed may spawn in that empty square that touches both of those flowers that has the color of the gradient and the type of the other one of course it could still just be a clone of either of those flowers so if I have a hibiscus and a violet gradient tulia, I could see a solid colored hot pink hibiscus, a solid violet tulia, or if I'm really lucky, a violet hibiscus. And I should keep fertilizing my flowers to make it a better chance at the violet hibiscus. So to recap, here are the color combinations. Things to keep in mind, pay attention to what touches your empty plots, and don't worry about the parents touching one another. The parent flowers, the ones that you want to breed together, need to touch that empty 
lot. Fertilize to up your chances of new colors and patterns, and keep in mind that it's only a chance. We don't have any guarantees, and it'll probably take a while, so if you're breeding that yellow Tulia and that red Tulia for an orange, you're probably gonna have a whole bunch of red and yellow spawn before you get your orange. So be sure to make use of your trowel and dig those up, move them somewhere else, make new pairs, so that you keep your breeding area open. If you plant in spaced pairs, either right next to each other horizontally or up and down, this will give you way more places for seeds to spawn than if you did it diagonally. And don't forget to water your flowers each day to help them grow faster. And if all of this is really overwhelming to you, you can also just plant the most haphazard garden. Chaos gardening works really well in this game. I think the players I've seen with the most diversified gardens have just planted a whole bunch of flowers and let them grow. But if you've been really trying for a particular color, at least now you have a better idea of how it all works. I know for me, bringing in the flower breeding knowledge I had from other games actually made it a little bit more difficult for me because I was expecting things to work in that way and the mechanics are not the same. And if you forget everything else, just remember mixing colors of flowers in this game is very similar to just mixing paint. Hopefully this helps you with flower breeding in Hello Kitty Island Adventure. If it did, consider giving the video a like to help it get out to more players. Subscribe for more Hello Kitty Island Adventure content. We have a ton of guides on the channel for almost everything in the update and I try to stream every update and quest when we can. Turn on notifications to find out the next time we go live. Hope to see you there.